Amber Mack, and I'm here at the Toronto Region Board of Trade Gala Dinner, and I am joined by Dr. Jeffrey Hinton. It's a real honor to speak with you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you, of course, uh, are known as the godfather of artificial intelligence. What does it feel to have a title like that? Um, slightly embarrassing, but very nice. Tell me a little bit about your history in artificial intelligence. Uh, it spans many, many decades. How did you first get interested in the topic of deep learning? So I got interested in how the brain works when I was at high school, and I've been interested ever since. And for many, many years, most people in artificial intelligence thought the brain was irrelevant. They thought computers would do artificial intelligence, and we didn't need to think out about how the brain did it. But it turns out thinking about how the brain did it has, is what has led to big breakthroughs. What kept you interested in this topic over many, many decades, despite the fact that maybe it didn't have the worldwide attention that it does today? Well, the brain has to work somehow, and it certainly doesn't work the way people in AI thought it worked, and so somebody had to figure it out. A lot of people are worried about the future of work. When they hear the term artificial intelligence, they're worried about it destroying jobs. What do you think the future looks like? Um, I think there's clearly some jobs will go, but there's many jobs will be created. And one thing that I don't think people understand is it'll make a lot of jobs actually easier to do. So if you're a radiologist, for example, there's a part of the job which is looking at an image and figuring out what kind of cancer it is and or how it's progressed. That's going to be done by machines in a few years' time. And that part of the radiologist's job is going to not require them to study many, many photos for many, many years. Um, dealing with people and explaining the treatment and planning the treatment, that will be there for a long time. Now, when we look back at your history in terms of coming to Toronto, I read an interesting story about why you ended up here. Can you tell me a little bit about that choice you made to come to this city many years ago? There were several different reasons. Um, one of them was I liked Canada's social system. Another one was I didn't like the military funding in the US. So I was at Carnegie Mellon, which was a very good school, but almost all their money came from the military. And I really didn't like that. And that motivated me to come to a, a nicer country. This is something that many people are concerned about today, of course, AI weaponization, and you are a voice against this happening. Can you talk a little bit about where we're at today in 2019 when it comes to AI warfare? I think it's quite scary. I mean, people have been saying for some time, you know, it's a long way in the future. And there's a lot of things about AI that are a long way in the future, but autonomous weapons are just about here. They have the technology to do them now, and it's now a political issue whether anybody's going to do anything to seriously regulate them. What we need is something like a Geneva Convention that regulates it, and people have been trying to get that, but it's been blocked by a combination of the US, Russia, and Israel. You just received the Order of Canada. What did that mean to you? A lot. It's my adopted country, and I've been here a long time. I like Canada, and it's very nice to be recognized by the place you live. Well, thank you so much, and good luck with your speech tonight. Thank you. Thank you.